And this is Davina Joy. Welcome. Hello. How are you How today? How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm doing well. Um, yeah, just excited to do anything with anyone right now, pretty yeah, much. Absolutely. Um, so do you have any uh, success or failure in real life uh, stories? So is this like meeting total strangers and then you end up dating type deals or? It could be even a friend, just like not online. So I guess this is so hypocritical of me because up before the pandemic, I had this idea for the podcast. Now I didn't get to start this specific one until during the pandemic, but I didn't want to meet someone online. And I feel like people are more like they're more afraid to meet people in real life now with the you can just go online. Um, yeah, because online, this is actually, I think, a big part of the problem in society, period, is the depersonalization yeah. of, like, dating. It's like, oh, you want to date this person or meet somebody to be intimate with, but, like, you don't want to do it in real life. Like, there's so much more than a picture to a person, you know? We're absolutely. judging people off, like, no one knows what to write. Bios are the <laughs> fucking worst. <laughs> Mine they're is so the- dumb. <laughs> <laughs> mine just says I like I'm, dumplings or something it's like okay if people swipe on me for that I probably shouldn't date them <laughs> or you guys are gonna eat some fucking rad dumplings together <laughs> um and mine just I just was like blatantly honest I'm like I like tall people I know I'm short and that everyone should be tall to me but you're not like I like tall guys <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> and um I'm, I'm looking for like a conscious connection I need somebody who has some type of either foot in the door in spirituality or understanding of energy and how important our thoughts are how important you know um like meditation is and um do and self-love like somebody who's really already at that place where they're not looking for the external validation because that adds so much into codependency. I feel like that adds a lot into the insecurities and and the patterns that most people, I mean, people are in a pattern in dating and they have no idea, you know, and that's why they keep attracting. I know for myself, I keep attracting the wrong shit and I'm like, I should be fucking smarter than this. No, I know superficial. exactly what you mean. So <laughs> I, I need a hottie. And it does, it's not even a person that has to be hot to everyone around me, but my feeling for them has to be this, like, major attraction. And mm-hmm. I guess I connect that to the physical because that's what first, like, gets my eye with somebody, but that's not what keeps me there. Like, a hot guy that has no personality, I'll fuck him, but that's it. Like, we're done, <laughs> you know? No, exactly. Um, I love what you said about self-care as well. That's so true. Because even I know now as a nearly 30-year-old woman, the way I would respond to a guy is very differently than the 21-year-old who'd be like, you know, expecting them to say something and then they didn't say it and getting annoyed, but just because I needed that validation. Whereas now I don't, you know, I don't need it. So it's grand. Yeah. Yeah. It's even, it's gotten to a point, like when people compliment me, there's a part of me that wants to be like, not that I don't care, which is, it, it's not that I don't care. And it's funny because children do this. When kids are younger and you tell them like, you're cute, you're whatever. What do they usually respond with? I know. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> that is so fucking deep and profound because they, know, they don't need you. They're not saying thank you. They're not saying, oh, I'm glad you see that in me. I know. Yeah. And we lose that because people start shaming what do you mean you know? What do you know? You say thank you. That's rude. Yeah. No, it's not fucking rude. We should know. We should have that inner knowledge and that inner wisdom and confidence and self esteem. So, yeah, the person, I still find myself sometimes thinking, like, you should know what I'm thinking. And, but in the work I've done, I can be more self aware to go, Davina, why do you think? they should know what you want right now why do you think that they should magically like say the right thing that's (laughs) no it's so true I have a perfect example of that so uh yesterday it was someone someone called me stupid on like a review somewhere very mean I am not stupid but I was texting the guy that I've been seeing and I was like oh my god I was like someone called me stupid um on this review but I was like but I'm street smart and he goes yeah but 
old me and I was just like you know laughing like yeah but old me if I were like 21 I would have been like well, why didn't he say I'm really smart <laughs> you know why wouldn't his response have been oh not only are you street smart you're like super intelligent but I don't you're into that. yes guys I don't know it's like I don't need the reassurance for it so it uh, that's so funny that you're saying that I was just thinking about that all yesterday yeah it makes a big difference so like I'm 39 I turned 39 in March so for me like it was always meeting people in real life. Like the online thing is actually like the weirder, like, and I know it's been around for a while, but I, I read energy. I can't. And so like, if a guy has sunglasses on in all his photos, I'm swiping left. Yes. I'm not going, I can't even see your eyes. Like I can't even like, I have to, if this is the only feel of you I'm going to get, cause, and if you don't write a bio even at all, I usually swipe left because dude, a fucking sentence like is it that hard you know what I mean like that just shows it I don't know I, I just write a fucking sentence you know even if you're like I like turtles like cool at least we have a starting point I would at say yes we, on turtles at least we have a starting point I'm like oh what other animals do you like yes. you know or something but like when there's absolutely nothing it just becomes so, there's a difference between like superficial to me and then just like, it just makes me feel like I can already read this person. Like A, doesn't really care. Like whatever they're looking for is probably not in alignment with what I'm looking for. Um, and unless they're so hot. See, this is where I'm superficial. If you're so fucking sexy, I'm like fine I'll swipe right and we'll see how the conversation goes I know I did that I did <laughs> so that recently bad. because I was like you know like before the pandemic but I was like oh this person's so hot let me just just for a second but uh, he was just so dumb the poor lad but like most of the time I swipe right just to see if they swiped right on me like is a person <laughs> this hot into me that's honestly if we never talk yeah. I just want to see if we fucking match <laughs> and you know what's funny as well some of these like super hot guys I'll also check the job and they've got like a really good job but then like no street smarts and when I say street smarts I mean like able to common you know sense. common sense can like and they'd be saying stuff in conversation and they'll just not like one guy was like um Oh, you're from Ireland. I only know, I'm not sure if I've said this on the podcast already, listeners, sorry if I did, um, but uh, I, the only stuff I know about Ireland is, I know this person had in an, in, in a job that you need like two degrees for, okay, and was ripped, ripped. And he goes, the only thing I know about Ireland is from the movie Brave. And I go, that's Scotland. And then he goes, oh, and then he goes, well, you know what I do know? I know uh, a little bit from the movie Train Spot, and that was in Ireland, right? And I go, no, again, Scotland. <laughs> and he's then, like, the only thing I know about Irish is Lucky Charms. <laughs> no, then, then he said log Wait, throwing sport. Yeah. And I was like, a log throwing sport, that's not Ireland. And he goes, it is Ireland, they wear a kilt. And I go, no, again, that's Scotland, pal, just drop it, it's fine. <laughs> like you don't need to know anything about where I'm from and you're like I might have liked you before you said all the wrong facts but now I'm like dude google Ireland and throw me a fact from fucking google or like, just ask me strike three yeah just ask me like oh, so or just ask me. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Like, is there sun? Is there fucking grass? <laughs> are there castles? Yes, yes, and yes. There are all three. <laughs> um, but so, like, dating online is interesting. I do like to meet people in person. The problem for me, the reason I like the online is I think I come off, like, especially if I'm all googly-eyed for somebody's picture and think they're hot, I come off less googly-eyed. Like, the second I want to fuck somebody, there is a twinkle in my eye and a little bit of psychosis. And like, they can see it, they can feel it. It's like there. And sometimes that, you know, aggressive energy guys think they want it. And then they meet me and then they change their thoughts <laughs> on that whole thing. But, um, so it's nice in person because I can tell like right away. And I've learned one major thing I've learned that's just been beautiful. It was through some meme is Pretty much the gist of it is when you meet somebody and you feel like so much excitement and there's butterflies in your stomach and you just totally like feel like you're going to explode, that's not the one. 
the one is going to make you feel like grounded and safe and secure. And it doesn't mean there aren't butterflies and it doesn't mean that there isn't this energy going through you, but there's not this like, like you're not pressed. It's not like a lust. It's like a, a security and like a comfort, you know? And so yeah. I've started noticing my energy around guys that like I'm into and I can tell like when I'm all like hyper, like, like leechy, it's like, oh, I want to fuck them, you know? But like when I'm around somebody who's so hot and I'm not like being the biggest pervert in the world in my head, I'm like, oh, this is someone that I should be like paying attention to. And that shifted me a lot in, in my, since I've gotten older, but God, it's, there's just nobody for me. I swear to God, I'm about to give up because I just, don't feel like love is in my charts. I don't know. But I will say there's been a couple times that in my younger years, this was younger, Davina, I like to be choked. Okay. And there were two times in my life where guys, I don't know why, but like in first time meeting, like kind of put their hand on my neck and like did a little squeeze. Most people would probably be like, get the fuck up and get it. I'm like, oh, I'm wet as fuck. You know oh what I mean? God. Like we're done. That was like something that made me like, oh, I want you right fucking now. I just the confidence of like being able to read that. I don't know if it was in me or if this is just a move they do. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But some of my friends are like, you're a psychopath. <laughs> I mean, like who meets a stranger and gets turned on because they put their hand around your neck? I'm like, but wait, when Let's do go. they do that? Let's do they do that after kissing you, mid kissing, or before? No, no. Like I'm talking about. There was one guy. I used to be a dancer, and as a dancer, like I was a topless dancer in Arizona. As a dancer, I'm not dating any kinds, like none of that. And I actually would avoid like dancing for really hot guys because I'm I am a gay man in a woman's body. Like I'm just like down to fuck. Um, and so if I have a hot guy and, and, and they think I'm hot, it's, I'm trying, when I was a dancer, it was like, I'm here to make money and I'm here to leave. Like, this isn't about anything. Like I'm not dating a fucking guy that comes to a strip club, no judgment. But back in the day, this is from when I was like 22 to 27. And, uh, so one of the guys was just a guy I was standing at the bar at the strip club, like ordering a drink. And this guy comes up behind me and like, just kind of does that. And he had tipped me already at the stage. So like, he wasn't like complete, complete stranger. He had, you know, <laughs> given me some money while I was dancing. <laughs> but like, I don't know why he felt comfortable enough to do. And I, I read energy. Like I knew that it was, I was safe. There was no part of me that felt uncomfortable. There was no part of me that didn't feel safe. The other time that it happened was at a friend's party. I have a friend in Arizona who throws this huge party called Spring Bling every spring and it's like he knows everyone in arizona so this place is packed people fly from different parts of the country to go to this party it's huge and there was a guy there that just like we had been kind of looking at each other and then we're standing near each other and he just like did i don't know why he did that but he i did hook up with i didn't hook up with the the stripper like club guy but the guy at the party for sure like we ended up talking and so I don't know it was just like two times that I randomly had a guy who was uh, really hot put their hand yeah. on my neck I've had the exact opposite I like have a joke about it but the story basically is that um I was kissing well yeah I was kissing this guy uh here in New York and we were just kissing and I had just moved over recently enough, but he started to choke me, but I like got fright because I thought he was like trying to kill me. <laughs> it was like, oh. <laughs> well, I didn't know choking was like, and I got, so, I remember- well, choking doesn't- Oh, my heart, like, I remember being like, what's, oh, do you know what? Because I don't even think we had kissed at this stage. Yeah, it was, we hadn't kissed. That's why it even gave me such a shock. I, he brought me home or we had kissed, sorry, at the bar, and we went home, and we were just sitting on the couch, and then he turned around and grabbed my choke, and I thought, oh no, this is it, this is how I go. This is the end of my life, like, <laughs> I gotta fight right now for my existence. Well, I would've been shit, I was just well, like. Well, yeah, if I went home with, like, a stranger. Well, he yeah, was a, like, he was I went a. home with a stranger. He actually wasn't a stranger, because he's actually a friend of a friend. So, in one way, in the back of my head, I was like, there's no way the lads that I'm friends with, friend is going to murder me now, right? 
<laughs> oh, it's gotta be really weird. You have no idea, girl. It could have. I mean, oh I wouldn't put shit past anyone. Like, I would probably feel if I was in somebody else. I reason felt secure is that neither one of us were territory. You know what I mean? Like we weren't at my house or their house. Like it wasn't some place that they knew better than I knew. So it just felt like this neutral, like yes. okay thing. I mean, I like to <laughs> be touched and touch. And so I would love, I I don't know how the dating thing's gonna work for me, but um, but in real life now seems so hard because it's just like, even if I'm at a bar, I just don't know how to start the conversation. Like, even though I'm very extroverted, I'm also very introverted and I can be very shy. And people always laugh at me when I say I'm shy because, you know, like you can tell that I'll talk about whatever the fuck. But when I meet somebody and I'm interested in them, I'm like, I don't know what to say other than like, should we fuck? I think that's the problem is that I'm such a pervert. I go straight to the like, why aren't we in bed together? And I just want that experience. And it's like, Davina, how about you get to know someone you fucking live with? That is is funny though. It is like, it, I'm because I'm super confident and I'm very sociable but when it comes to someone I like I can find that I can get a little quiet and in my head I'm like this isn't your personality talk I actually um so like the guy that I've been seeing for like four months now we obviously were just virtually seeing each other but then we've started to like meet up now because it's like a little count Aww, and yeah we yeah. did like two socially distant- so you met when pandemic already started like you guys connected through pandemic uh, yeah, we as soon as the pandemic started, we matched on Hinge. So this okay. is really against my podcast, but whatever. And then we had like social distance dates, but I mean like we like walked beside each other with masks on or whatever. And okay. then the third date, we just like went for a picnic, and we were like, oh, we're like we're fine. We haven't we've been like quarantined for so long and stuff. So, um, but the first few minutes, like the first fifteen minutes, I felt quite. Even though we've talked, like we've had like a million Facetimes, but I just mm-hmm. felt like kind of nervous. So my sister sent me a video and I thought, oh, this will be a good icebreaker. I was like, oh, my sister sent me a video and I pressed it and she's just talking away. And then she flips the camera and it's her, (laughs) it's, I don't know if it's hers or my brother's, but it's just a blocked toilet in her house. (laughs) 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 Oh shit. And I was like, I literally dropped the phone. And then, (laughs) oh oh, no. (laughs) thankfully he laughed and we just it was like a nice icebreaker who knew someone else's shit would be a nice icebreaker (laughs) oh I need to be with somebody who loves to talk about shit I don't know what my obsession is like I've literally never done anal with a penis so it's not like I'm like into like poop on the dick and like you know like stuff like that but like I talk about poop all the time the fun the weird thing about me what really like It's so funny and we all do it and it feels fucking fantastic. And um, I don't know, like, I hate farting though. Like, (laughs) this is my, it's the weirdest thing about me. I don't want to smell my friend's fart. I don't want to smell a guy's fart. Like, if you cannot get up and walk away and fucking fart somewhere else, like, it's over. It's over. Because I don't want to smell my own fart. Like, they're fucking gross. The air is filled with fecal matter when you fart. Like, what are you trying to do to me? Get out of here. So, like, I don't fart in relationships. I don't want the guy to fart around me. Like, it will literally, like, bipolar light switch, like, make me angry. Like, I get fucking angry if someone farts around me it's like it's it's bad when I was in seventh grade I had the biggest crush on this guy and after school he had come over with a bunch of friends and we're leaving my room and he was looking at this poster and he farted I mean I was into him for months and months and months like his name written all over fucking everything shit he farted and looks at me and goes niblet done over <laughs> done I was done with that guy niblet what does what nibbling the mean? Fu- who? Why do you fart and say nibble? I don't know. Ew. Does it's he mean so like nibble or something? I don't... No, like a nibble is like a, like if you were to take a small bite of something, maybe that would be a nibble. But oh. like as in fart terms, like that's more nibble, but I don't know what a nibble is. And <laughs> I don't know why he says it when he farts, but he, he ruined my whole relationship 
relationship with fantasy. It ended up because we were only friends to him, but. Growing up was very interesting for me because I was considered the black girl at my school. Like I grew up in Fairfax County, Virginia in Great Falls and the, the elementary school I went to, all of that was very, very like white, you know? Um, in second grade, there was another black girl and myself. And one day in PE, she was running and one of her tracks fell out and the kids freaked out so much because they've never, like they don't know that hair can be clipped in like they freaked out so much and fucking like made fun of her so badly that she never came back to that school like third grade on she was gone you know um and so I had crushes on all of these like super hot white guys and they were never into me and it's I still see my self-esteem affected now when it comes to like if a white guy's into me I question I'm like is he though is he really I have and I love I love dating white guys I'm sorry I mean I love hot guys period <laughs> but like as of recent the last few years 2008 I've pretty much been dating white guys and it's like I question it probably feeds into a lot of the insecurity and the reason that we break up because I'm like you don't really love me you think I have a velcro head like I don't know I just <laughs> that's really hard though and it is it's yeah. something that like we can all point all point to things that I was just talking about that with my friend Brendan like things that uh, happened to us as kids that you just you can't really let let go of and you can't help but but let it affect you. I'm the same, like, because I've no, I've a, I've a non-existent relationship with my birth mother and I won't get into it too much because it'd be too long, <laughs> but she used to say some, uh, no one will ever love you to me. And it's something mm. that when guys tell me they love me, it's like, I find that very hard to deal with. It's weird, but it's, I'm working on it and it's good to know it now. But in past yes. times, I didn't really like, I didn't make the connection. And that's the thing. I don't think any pattern or any core belief cannot be changed and shifted and evolved out of, but you have to be aware first yes. off that the problem even exists. And then you have to be willing to go through the pain, like sit with that, like feel your mom saying that. I actually don't have a very close relationship with my birth mom either. She's a lunatic. And so there's a, she, all she said to us was negative things. And that's why I feel like I'd be a good roaster and why most of the time in my relationships, my friends know I love them because I'm a cunt to them because <laughs> I grew up with cunt meaning love or being a bitch yeah. meaning love, like saying negative things, but having to filter through that and still believe that, well, this person loves me, even if the words that they're saying are this, you know? Yeah. And that's a hard pattern to break, especially when it comes from, and my parents never had the best relationship. So my whole first experience with love is two parents that aren't necessarily in love. My dad was in the Peace Corps in Africa and that's where he met my mom. And my mom's mom said, my grandma said, you're going to marry him because he'll take you to America and give you a better life. So she didn't really ever love him. It wasn't even necessarily a choice of hers. So I grew up in a, in a very, and my dad's Jewish and my mom's Muslim. So I grew up in a very like weird energy and you know, there, there's a lot of things that even from things that my sisters say, like, I've always been a crybaby. Like, if I'm happy, I'm crying. If I'm mad, I'm crying. If I'm fucking laughing, I'm crying. Like, I cry a lot. And I used to think that was so bad. And now in my adulthood, I'm like, man, I'm so lucky that I'm just like so fearless to like express yeah. myself and let that shit process through me emotionally, even if that means that I'm, I'm crying. But the weird thing behind that is then it makes you start feeling like when someone sees that you cry a lot, they almost start desensitizing themselves from your, your emotions behind the tears. So then they start looking at it as like, oh, you're a crybaby. Oh, Davina's crying again, blah, blah. And it's like, dude, but there's either hurt or there's yeah. happiness or there's pain or there's something behind that. And just because it happens a lot doesn't mean that it's that ever changes. I just feel a lot. I'm a major empath. And so I can fucking be crying because I see a dead bug. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I, pro I, I cry a lot. Oh no, I, 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 I do, I do too. Like I won't, I was crying a little bit this morning on something I saw on Instagram, but it was really sad, but I can't remember what it was now. <laughs> oh, me too. They it get the fucking murder. I know that they are, or just stories people are sharing as well. And um, just, uh, yeah. But I think the thing is that it's better to be able to show your emotions that like, so if someone's like, oh, you're a crybaby. Like, well, would you rather 
be with someone who's very stoic, never can express what's going on, and then they throw a kettle at you six months down the uh, down the road because they're so frustrated. Like, right, because they exploded because they suppressed everything else. And yeah, I I definitely agree with that. I think that it's and I used to be guilty of this, being like, oh, I don't want a guy that cries. Like, don't. Like, if you need to cry, I don't want to see it. Like, that's not manly. Now I'm just like, oh my God, I want a guy who can like, in every single moment, he's so connected to his fucking emotions that like, there's no questioning. Like, you're so in the flow that you're just, you just are. Like, we need to let people just be. And in childhood, telling kids to stop crying telling them not to express themselves, telling them boys don't cry, all of that shit is just so antiquated. It's such an old mindset that I think when we can start shifting that, which I see a lot of my spiritual friends with kids, I'm like, man, I want to be your kid. Like, I wish I could be born as your kid because they just give them so much freedom to express themselves, to be who they are. It's, it's beautiful. And I think that's where a lot of the shifts in the paradigm of our existence are going to come into play. Yeah, that's but they're, great. They're used to, my response to crybaby was like, I'm crying because I want to punch you in the fucking face. So which do you prefer? You know, because it was So this would be anger. like men, this would be men you would be dating. They would be like saying this. Well, this is with my sisters a lot. I don't know guys have ever, most guys I'm dating will be like, Davina, you're, you're really emotional. I hate that. It's almost as worse as calling somebody fucking crazy. I know it is. Oh, you're a woman. Yeah. I I hate, I hate that. You're you're being emotional now. It's like, well, don't fucking make me emotional. (laughs) But not only that, emotional isn't bad. And so now you're putting a judgment as if like being emotional is a bad thing. (sighs) And I get it. I'm not for everyone. Like there are some people that actually do, Katie, prefer to have that stoic, (laughs) non-feeling, non-expressive. And dude, by all means, you guys find each other. But if you're with me, you're probably going to know every fucking thought that goes through my head. And I get that that's annoying as fuck, too. Like, I annoy myself I'm, all the time. I always, it's so funny that you're saying that because I'm the same. I'll have to say whatever's in my head out loud straight away. And it's just more just so it doesn't grow legs. And then I don't let it fester. So I have to be with someone who's yeah. okay with me being like, if they, like, if they say something, me being like, okay is you know did you mean this or did you mean that and then they're like oh I meant that and then in my head then there's no argument it's fine it's like oh yeah okay, well that. that is communication I mean that comes to just having the most clear communication I don't think people admit like that when someone says something you've got to hear what they're saying feel it and then yeah if you guys are on the same page there probably isn't a question that comes up but if someone says something and there's someone that loves you and whatever they said felt really hurtful there's nothing wrong with being like hey when you just said da 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 I took it this way can I ask what you meant and how you meant for me to take it and they might be like that's exactly how I meant it and then a fight will start or whatever (laughs) but they might be like whoa 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 that's like 180 from what I meant what I meant was this and we need People should be learning to communicate so much more. And you know, every zodiac sign is different. Every human being is different. Like, I don't think people are necessarily taught to keep things to themselves. Like, Scorpios tend to be more secretive and more, you know, they don't necessarily share everything that they're thinking like that. And I think that that just can come from whatever, you know, it's not necessarily a taught thing. But what should be taught and I think is better is Like if a child is crying, how about share with me what you're feeling? Why are you crying? Why are you hurt? What's hurting you? Then you can process and be like, I'm sorry that you took what I said this way, or I'm sorry that not getting the toy you want is making you feel this way. But that's how life is. There's going to be a lot of things that you want in life that don't come your way. It doesn't mean that 
you know, it, it like you're losing something, you know, because whatever we're meant to have, we're going to have. And there's just no hard lessons. I'm so glad I was born in 81. I'm so glad I was raised when I was raised. My parents like had money, but they didn't just give it out. Like we had to do yeah. chores. We had to work for stuff. If we wanted something outside of like birthdays and Christmas, yeah. yes, Jew Muslims, we did Christmas, a tree and everything, but it wasn't like we were religious. We we're just like there's my sisters and I like there's more presents on Christmas than one present for eight days for Hanukkah so fuck that um and so we're just like let's get a tree but I think that there's a lot communication is so key and being brave enough to say in the middle of a conversation hold on I don't get what you just meant there or what you said made me offended I think being able to be that aware and that responsive in the moment and that communicative is like, that's what a conscious relationship is. Like, that's what I'm looking for when I say a conscious connection. Yes. Someone who doesn't like, I don't need you to blow me up and make me feel like I walk on fucking rose petals. I know I'm human and I'm imperfect. <laughs> I need somebody who can say, Hey, this is an imperfect moment of yours. How can we shift this? How can, mm -hmm. how can you learn from this? You know? And so, you, so most of your dating has been in real life. Most of my dating has definitely been in real life. I'll say from online, I've only, I think I've only hooked up with three guys that I've ever met through like online and outside of that, maybe two others that I've gone out to like get coffee and then there wasn't like any connection. I actually like online is not successful for me, but I, I'm the problem because hot guys sometimes don't take good pictures. Like some people are photogenic and then they look horrible in real <laughs> life. And then some people look horrible in pictures and you meet them and you're like, dude, you're fucking hot. I don't know how to filter through that yet. So like, I just, I'm probably the problem because there, and the fact I'm trying to get myself to like guys that are like 5'10". 5'10 to me isn't tall. I want like 6'1 or taller, you know, like even to me, six foot is like on the teeter of like not being tall. I don't know why. Well, I've just been that way since I was born. So when you see, when you're on a night out, you'll go for like a tall guy. And then would you just approach him being like, hey, I don't know. <laughs> just... Yeah. I mean, just a tall guy catches my eye more, but I mean, I've, I'll find myself, if I meet a shorter guy in person and we vibe really well, I'm way more open to yeah. like seeing if something could happen between us. When I'm on a dating site and somebody says that they're, and they say, you know, I'm 5'10 or 5'9 or whatever, I, I just have this like initial like X. I just, I, I don't even think about it. I think I just swipe <laughs> left like on auto drive. And a lot of guys that are like 5'9", five, 5'10", five, are fucking hot. Like, they're really gorgeous fucking guys. Yeah. I'm 5'2". So oh my like god, five, you're nine, tiny! Yeah, I'm not tall. I'm a very short person, so that should be tall to me. Um, I have dated guys that were around that, that height, but I've met them in person. So I'm trying to open myself up to, like, when I'm online dating if they say they're 5'10", like, Davina, just fucking swipe right and see who they are, see how their personality is. Because A, how horrible, like, I wouldn't want someone to judge me off of any of my, you know, physical characteristics. I think I'm a badass, amazing woman. And so the fact that I do that is like, you're just, it's just so counterproductive <laughs> for my dating. I will admit right now, I guess you're considered an incel, but I haven't had sex in like a really, really, really long time with another person. I mean, I kind of did, but he wasn't big. So it felt like a glorified <laughs> finger bang. Yes, yeah, so I think I've had sex with the same guy. The skinny <laughs> penis, the skinny, the skinny penis. I mean, God, he's, he's so fucking hot and he's so, he's like six, three and built like this guy. Mm -hmm. I was like, no. Yeah. Same, same. So My guy was I, hot too and built well. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. I don't, I guess I can consider it. I mean, technically we had sex feeling wise. <laughs> it was a finger. <laughs> so how long so. have you not had sex for? So the last time I had had sex was the end of December, 2018. Okay. That's two years. Well, a what, like a year and a half. Yeah. But the guy that I had sex with 
it was four days short of my actual one year. So if I had okay. not had sex with him end of December, 2019, it would have been a full year. And then we did hook up one other time in January. And then, so it's been since then, but again, and so that was the same guy. It doesn't really feel like <laughs> I've had sex ever. Like there's a part of me that's like, have I forgotten how it works? Like, um, why did you choose to take a break? It's not. That's why I say that it's like an incel, like involuntarily oh, sell it. Because see, I don't know what an incel is. People are always like, these incels. And I keep going, I should Google that. And then I never do. Yeah. It means involuntarily celibate. Um, oh. oh my so God. It just so happened that like, I hooked up with a guy December. He was actually Irish. It was one of, it was one of the guys. I'm a cocktail server at a comedy club, and it was one of my customers. And I never hooked up with an Irish guy, and he just had such He's a from personality. Ireland. He was from Ireland. Oh, as I soon as I this. like came up to the table and I heard his accent, I'm like, "Oh, are you uncircumcised? Yay!" Because I love uncircumcised dicks. <laughs> and the place that I work, like I can pretty much say anything to anyone. I hope yeah. I always do. And uh, I'm a comedian, so I just say, oh, "I'm a comedian." and it doesn't matter but um so we started flirting and then his friends started kind of wingmanning it and I'm like look you don't have to wingman for him I think he's hot and I'm DTF so like are we gonna do this after my shift I don't know so we did it was okay it wasn't as I mean he had been drinking a bit so it wasn't and he wasn't gonna sleep over I don't know the guy you know so I yeah. dropped him off right after but um so I hooked up with him December 2018 and then, like, around February, March 2019, I was like, oh, my God, I haven't had sex in forever. Like, why is that not happening? And then I went to this meditation retreat in May, and I was, like, sitting in this meditation, and I'm like, I've been not having sex in unintentionally. Maybe I need to intentionally fall into the, like the celibacy. Maybe I need to make this an intentional thing. Like the next time I have sex, do I want it to just be a fling again? Do I want it to be casual? Like I've done a lot in my life or do I want to meet somebody that like, actually I can possibly like go on this life's journey with and be a yeah. partner with. Um, and so with the guy that I hooked up with in December, January I mean I, I definitely already knew that we weren't that there was no like relationship there he he works at my job uh that there's no relationship there but like there was a really good attraction and we really like each other like he's a cool guy we're still totally cool he has no idea of my thoughts on this penis and I hope he doesn't <laughs> see this um but um I guess after that happened there is a part of me that's like eh, like I'm just I'm, I'm never going to stop myself from experiencing life. Like if I'm out and I meet someone and we connect and it leads to us being intimate, like I can treat a one night stand as if we've been together for 10 years because I love sex so much. Mm -hmm. And I love being present and in the moment and making people feel good and feeling good myself that like, I don't have these weird, I'm not shy when I'm naked with somebody, I'm like, lift up your balls. I'll lick your taint. You know, yeah. like I don't fucking, there's no, we don't have to work towards a lot, but, um, I think there's just a part of me who's like, that's like, I, I want to meet somebody that's, and I'm kind of polyamorous too. So it's not like if I meet somebody that that's the only person I'll ever be with. I'm totally open to discussing open relationships and having boundaries set but being open to like other people like them hooking up with someone else or me hooking up with someone else or a threesome but um I don't know there's just not I I'm particular and picky I guess like somebody's really gotta they've got to ignite a fire in me and I feel like when I was younger there were fires all over I was a fire you know it was yeah. like I just wanted everything and now I'm like I want quality over quantity Ugh, I hate myself now no, that's fine. I do think that the it, it, for that, it would be easier when you meet someone in real life because you're able to kind of suss it out a bit more. But I don't know. I'm starting to change my tune a little because all of my real life has been such a failure that I just, I just don't know. I guess because it's really hard for us because we're both comics and we're both in hospitality. So we only meet drunk people at night. It's very hard <laughs> for it to be more than an attraction because you're just like, this person's not making any sense. Um, and then, yeah, you, you're not going to pick someone. You're not going to, it's harder to find some, whereas at least online. And again, this is an anti-online dating podcast. <laughs> but at least online, you're able to like meet people outside of your group. My stepmom was saying things like, 
because I was saying I was like nervous with the online as well because the only problem the reason why the pandemic was good for online is because we have the time but once we go back to real life right. we're doing stand-up at night we're bartending waitressing all of that stuff but she was saying a good thing and maybe this would be good for you as well do you have friends who have brothers cousins like to put it out there hey I'm looking for to meet yes I prefer meeting somebody that someone I know knows I mean that's in my eyes better than a stranger because you have to also realize once you meet a stranger if things start going well like there's other people in their lives that you have to meet and like what if their best friend fucking sucks or what if they're you know what I mean like at least if he meets one that's kind of in a mutual circle as you you know that you'll hopefully vibe with most of the the people that they like hang out with or spend time with yeah but I mean uh, I, I prefer to try to meet somebody in person. Like, honestly, these protests, I've been looking around like, okay, well, I know you're not racist. And, yes. <laughs> and, and I know that you're, like, down for the peaceful, and I know that you're, like, here to fight for equality and justice, which is huge for me. I'm really big about justice and, and equality, so... I'm almost just like, I want one of the signs, like I wear a sign on my back that's like, if you're hot and single and protesting, come to my face and I'll tell you if I want your number. You know oh my what God, I mean? Dude, like dude. This is how you're going to meet your future husband. This is great. <laughs> Whenever I go, one thing I've got to learn to stop doing is the expectations on things. That's another horrible mm -hmm. thing in life that we put onto everything. But like when I go to like spiritual events or when I go to places, I'm always just like, oh, maybe this is a moment. Maybe this is a moment. Maybe this is a moment. And it's like, I think having that as a, as a motivation in the back of my head doesn't work for me either because then I find myself really discouraged and sad if I haven't met anyone or didn't connect to anyone. Yeah. I've been doing this thing called ecstatic dance. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. No. Ecstatic dance is like a group that they do them all over the world now, but you play music. Most of them, I think all ecstatic dances are sober events. So they're like, please don't smoke weed or do any drugs or drink or anything before you come to the dance. When you're on the dance floor, it's silent. There's no speaking to other people. Everything is reading body language. You can dance with others if they show consent by like, there's body language to yeah. consent. And if somebody doesn't want to, they can also, you know, be like back up or yeah. whatever. But I have gone to a few ecstatic dances with this whole like expectation that I'm going to meet this super hot guy who's like totally open to just moving with their body and moving through their body, no matter who's around and be in this community. That's amazing. And I haven't met any, I've been to like seven and I've never met anybody. They're doing them online right now because nobody can get together. Cause it'll be like 200 people yeah. that get together and are all just dancing and people are crying. People are laughing. Like the DJs can play just the most soul activating music. It's fucking incredible. But I had this whole expectation that, oh, I can meet someone at ecstatic dance. I can meet someone. My problem is when I meet someone and I'm into them, I like shell up. I'm not giving them all this eye contact. There is no welcome sign that's like, hey, I'm interested. Come in. We're open. You know, I'm more like, you're so hot. Get away. And I've got it. I've got it. I'm, I'm like an elementary school child who's no. like, I want to pull your hair and run. But that's the same. That's the same what Dara said last week. And I feel the same as well. Like usually if there's a group of guys and the one I like, that's probably the one I'll talk less, least to. And I think that's something we need to all work on. Just being more comfortable, being like flirting with the person we actually like. Or I'll be yeah because i because i'll flirt with them but i'll be like mean like i'll like roast them or <laughs> i'll keep like poking poking fingered at them and like that's my way of flirting because that's how i express like i like somebody if i'm really really nice to somebody all the time it used to be that i probably didn't like give a fuck about them you know <laughs> yes, yes. but i'm changing that <laughs> i'm changing that because of my work that i've done spiritually to not necessarily come at people from my shadow wounded, you know, traumatized side, because it's not their problem to deal with. This is what I need to figure out. So working to come from love and kindness all the time, it's, it's crazy how hard it can be because there's something <laughs> fun about being a dick. Like that's why I'm a comedian, you know, yeah. there's yeah, something fun. I think, and I need I to know like someone has too. a personality. They, they do. Got, yeah, a little roasting. They should do. They'll only laugh at me if they like it. Like, um, right. the guy that I've been seeing, it's so funny because so many things you've said now, 
like I didn't want to interrupt you but it's made me think about the guy I've been seeing because usually all of my failed relationships have been because it's been so passionate and like obsessive nearly but mm-hmm. with this guy it feels really I mean, even when I meet up with him I feel very calm and it, you know I don't feel the need to like obviously we haven't been able to see each other but I don't feel that need either I'm like happy being like oh we'll see each other in a week or two which is like yeah very, very different second thing was on his hinge answer was uh what what way what type of crier are you and that's why I swiped on him because I was like oh that's interesting maybe weird <laughs> but yeah. it's funny that we're talking about crying and Did then it the- give options of what type of crier you can be no I I just wrote I wrote some I liked on that question because I liked on him mm-hmm. and then he wrote back so what type of crier are you and then I just wrote like <laughs> something like well I've been told that I can't remember what I wrote actually I must look back but I responded some weird way and then we, it was like a joke we were laughing back and forth um oh and then so you know I always see, hope people are okay with because the Irish humor is very roasty and sometimes if mm-hmm. it can be like I've no, noticed dating Americans they can fa- be very sensitive and I try like I'm like try to be nice and but like I want to be able to have the laugh as well so like we were sexting and he said oh, like, I'd have you suck me off. And I thought that was really weird because it's a really weird way to say, you know, I'm not like your Yeah, it's butler. like you're demanding or acting yeah. like, like, yeah, like it's I like don't a have to do a list. say in this bitch, no. <laughs> I'd have yeah. you suck me off yeah. and I'd have you get the milk. No, thanks. So I, yeah. <laughs> I, know, so I thought that was really weird. And what was good that I know that he's secure is I have roasted him about that like multiple times since and he's just laughed being like, yeah, I just said it, but he hasn't like gotten offended or defensive. He's like, and he's right. okay with me joking about it. So it's like, oh, okay. So is it all of these things you're saying? I'm like relating back to them, my own experience being like, oh yes, yes, Davina's right. Yes. <laughs> I def- I love that sentence. Davina's right. Um, I guess <laughs> I definitely need, that's why I think meeting people in real life is better for me too, because like people do not know how to, comprehend like it's very hard for people if you don't know who you're writing when you're writing a stranger especially online so you don't know if they're coming from insecurity if they're coming from trauma if they've been like abused with words verbally or mentally like there's so many things that you don't know so you could write the most innocent the most innocent fucking message to somebody where you're roasting them or joking with them. And because of whatever trauma they've had, they take it really, really personal or deeply. And that's something that, and then it can ruin everything. And you guys could have been great together, but because of this fucking message, text message is the same. Like all I can do is send the message, but I can't interpret it for you. I can't have you feel what my thoughts were behind it. And if you're a stranger and you think I'm coming at you to be a dick, I had this one guy online, oh my God, me and my roommate were like, what the fuck is wrong with this problem? He had a really weird name. It was very different. So like the first thing I wrote to him was being like something about like, oh, like what's the origin of your name? I've never heard that. And he's like, Ugh, I just wish I could meet someone that would let that like organically come up later in the convo. Like how, it, how it, many it, messages do I have to get about my fucking name? I'm like, what? Then change it? Yeah. I don't know. Like, or how does that bother you? Like if like, cool, write a fucking like response and then copy and paste it every time. If yes. it bothers, just be like, yeah, my name is from this anyway. But like I told it, there were so many awesome things about him, but the way he responded to like a simple, I said something else too. So it wasn't just about his name, but what he chose to focus on and then questioned my personality and intelligence, like, because I'm just asking about something so superficial, bitch, I will cut you. Like, what are you even, you have no idea how bad I can make you feel. Like, Mm. I will make you fucking cry. So learning how to get out of that mindset, because that's the biggest thing in my spiritualness is when I feel offended, I'm like, oh, I'm going to make you want to kill yourself. (laughs) Like, I'm really good with words. Like, I'm fucking raw. And I will, like, I can read insecurities and I will say them. And you may have never told me it's an insecurity, but I know because human design is like this other thing that's separate from astrology. It's a science and 
there's four types you can be in human design and I'm a projector. And one of our things is that we can read, like the second we meet people, we can read them. We can see things about them. We feel them like I will make you fucking suicidal. And so I've had to work really hard on realizing that when someone says something to offend me, like the second that you react like that, your power is theirs. They yes. own me. So I've learned to just keep like, I'm like, oh, you're not going to owe me. I had someone trying to troll me on one of my Instagram posts about how the Minneapolis police is uh, being dismantled. And he's been trying to like troll me and everything he says. I'm like, yeah, I like popcorn too. Yeah. Like whatever. Cause he was like, you, you guys go ahead and dismantle the police and get raped and robbed and whatever. He's like, I'll be over here sitting, sit here eating popcorn. And I'm like, I eat popcorn too. Like that's like, I know that's the best way to answer it. Yes. Like I've learned to start, take, like, just keep my energy and that I don't like, why do I need to roast somebody? Like they have to be them. Yeah. that's their fucking karma is that that they have to be them like that's the worst part of their existence so I just let it go now but um that guy was just it was so crazy I was like I've never and so I pointed that out to him I said I don't know what your inner issues are either with your name or in your life to where somebody who's like super kind and awesome and just trying to start a, a conversation that would be your response but like I hope you get over like that like you have trauma and you should like work on that and heal that and I think he blocked me because I gave him, <laughs> he doesn't I gave to him deal with truth. his yeah. he doesn't no it's ridiculous That'd be like me getting mad every time someone asks me about me being from Ireland in on yeah. online because you know I have Irish so I can't get mad about it and that's a thing that they can like go oh because we just don't know each other so it's fine or in like, person like a lot of them, uh, us in America like we don't know the differentiation between like a Scottish or an Irish accent yeah. or something you know what I mean so it would be like every time you speak someone being like oh you have an accent and you being like fuck you like, <laughs> yeah i'm gonna start doing that that's so funny <laughs> yeah, fuck like, you. you have an accent it's something to just fucking accept it's like being like oh how original you mentioned my accent i know like, that's what? so condescending that guy would be so annoying to date i'm sorry he thank you insane. i was like thank you for showing me yeah. this now at the hello because I uh, would want to kill you. I love when people show me their red flags at hello. Now, if they're hot enough, I don't necessarily listen because I want to get in their pants, but um, I've grown out of that. Like there's been so many times that I'm like, Davina, this person's the worst. Just get them <laughs> naked and then lose their number. You, I don't, I'm, <laughs> I love sex. Okay, I well, you sex. need to, after the pandemic, have sex, okay? You've deserved it. Stop being an incel because you I don't, don't you, care you, about the pandemic. I will have sex <laughs> right today. I don't care. Okay, well, I hope we better wrap this up because we went on a little long, and I hope that you have sex soon. Oh. <laughs> Wait. Thank just, you, Katie. I will let you know. Plug yourself. Tell the, the listeners where to find you. Oh, um, you can find me Instagram at the smallest fat girl. I also have another Instagram of a podcast that I did. It's in hiatus right now, but it's called naked and serious. And I interview people naked on my couch and we pretty much have like these like spiritual, like deep talks, but we're both just naked and talking. Um, and so that's on Instagram as well at naked and serious. And then I have a Twitter at the Davina joy, D A V I N A J O Y. But I don't tweet that much. I'm trying to get myself like into tweeting more it's just like I use Twitter to help me write jokes like I'll put in a thought mm -hmm. in there and see how I can like yeah. condense it you know but other than that I don't post a lot of the stuff should, on there it's should. just a lot I, I know I, I will quite helpful I still need to post that one that you told me about yeah. and send it to the guy so thank you for that I'm excited yeah okay well thank you so much uh I am going Thanks. to stop recording on all of this but before I do it all I'm gonna right. say thank you to the listeners and come back next week because I'm sick of doing intros and outros afterwards <laughs> I'm gonna stop this and talk to you for another second okay, okay. bye listeners love you guys, bye, guys. <laughs>